Welcome back to DBL. The Ariano family was brutally murdered in the 1960s. It is the oldest unsolved mass murder in Texas. Decades, decades later, are investigators any closer to cracking this case? Here's today's True Crime Chronicles. You know, we, we don't have a, a bad crime that happens here about once every three years. But this was the, this was the one of the century. It was a horrible crime. Could be just pure evil. It's a crime almost too gruesome to believe. On April 16, 1968, the Ariano family was traveling from Mexico to Texas. The father, Manuel, his wife, Monica, and his sister, Rosa, were traveling with the couple's three children. They were going to San Angelo because they had a newborn in the, in the family. While driving on a remote stretch of Highway 277, they got a flat tire. He didn't have a spare, so somebody picked him up and took him to Sonora. The stranger brought them to a tire shop and then back to their car. That's when something happened that police can't figure out. Then all of a sudden, the, the car was left abandoned and uh, there was bodies scattered everywhere. The next morning, road crews found two children dead, both shot in the head. Three miles down the road were the bodies of the father, wife, and sister. And then, hidden in the tall grass was the family's five-year-old boy who had been shot and stabbed, but miraculously survived. I do believe he saw his family killed. Manuel Jr. was the lone survivor but due to his age and language barrier, this was the only information he could give. Tall, cowboy with a cowboy hat, high top boots with his pants inside his boots. As years went by, police followed up on thousands of leads. They were on a real, real hard, hot track for a while. At one point, they had a prime suspect, a cowboy who committed a strikingly similar crime in California. And they went to California and got his DNA. It did not match anything that was in evidence. They kept finding strong leads, but the evidence wasn't matching up. I really feel that it's contaminated because in 1968, law enforcement didn't handle that type of evidence like we handle it today. For decades, communities have lived on edge. The feeling around was that there's somebody, maybe someone from our county here in Edwards County, someone from Sutton County, or someone out of Alberta County that's capable of murdering five people. What will it take to crack this case? The longer it goes, the colder it gets. Earlier, Lindsay and I spoke with the reporter who's been following this case. Take a look. We are joined by Ken's Five reporter Vanessa Croy in San Antonio, Texas. Thanks for being here, Vanessa. This is the oldest unsolved mass murder in Texas. 20 different investigators have tried to crack it. What's the challenge? What's stopping everyone from cracking it? Well, guys, you have to remember in 1968, evidence wasn't collected the same as it is today. So they believe that somehow during the investigation that the investigators at the time, uh, it wasn't that they weren't trying to do a thorough investigation. They just didn't have the resources that we do today. Mm. And another barrier that they believe was the uh, interview with the surviving son, which was Manuel Jr. He was only five years old. And they believe that there was some kind of language barrier between the investigators Spanish speaking uh, to the young boy who spoke more of a formal Spanish. And you have to remember as well, this young man had just been shot and stabbed. This is a day or two when he is still recovering in the hospital. In fact, uh, in the reports, there were, the Texas Ranger report said that it was a miracle that he even survived. Wow. I've been wondering this. Does your community still fear that there's a killer out there? Well, the other thing is this is still a very rural community as it was back then. In fact, where this happened um, along the stretch of Highway 277, you still can't even get any cell service out there. So that explains wow. how rural this is. And the fear that clinched these three counties was terrifying for these people. In fact, after we ran the story, I had so many people approach me and say at the time that the Mexican-American families that had to travel that highway never went alone after that because they they went in caravans because they were in fear that this was a racially motivated crime. Mm. Wow. Now, there is that just one survivor, that little boy, Manuel Jr., who you spoke of, who's grown up without his family. How is he doing today? Do you know? 
Well, unfortunately, we were not able to talk to Manuel Jr. Um, you know, at this time, I hope that he saw our story and knows that we still care. Or we want to find justice for him and his family. We do know that he is living in Mexico and that he is a, suc a successful banker, I believe. Uh, but unfortunately, we weren't able to speak with him. So your coverage on this case has actually helped generate some new leads and tips. So I want to ask, yes. where is the investigation at now? People have not forgotten this. And I can tell you real quick that I spent days going through uh, the reports, the crime scene photos, and you know, our investigator, uh, Deputy Volkman, De Chief Deputy Volkman said uh, in our story that it still haunts him. And you know, it's something that after I spent time looking at those pictures and these brutal crimes, you know, that stays with you. And so even 50 plus years later, people want justice for this family and for the surviving members. I can say that the investigators, the Edwards County Sheriff's Office, did get a very solid tip. I can't discuss the details of that to protect the person that came forward, but they did get a very good lead. They tracked it down to a person uh, where they were able to uh, get a DNA sample, and they're waiting on that right now. So wow. we are waiting for the results of that DNA sample to find out if this is the person uh, that perhaps is responsible for these brutal murders and can finally find justice for this family and that surviving boy. Well, it takes people like you, Vanessa, keeping it in the limelight. So thank you for keeping it in the public. To learn more about this case, visit kens5.com. The story is also the subject of a new podcast episode. All you have to do is search True Crime Chronicles on your favorite podcast player. Vanessa, great job on this. Thank you again. We'll be right back.